In this lesson you will learn about minor scales. As you watch the lecture, I would encourage you to pause the video to take notes, rewind to listen to material that may not have been clear at first, or fast forward through topics that you are comfortable with. After you've watched the videos, you can work through the practice exercises on Canvas. If you have any questions, post them to the discussion board. If you can, answer your classmates' questions on the discussion board as well. The TAs and I will check in periodically to moderate the discussion. You must take the short quiz before coming to class. You're welcome to take it as many times as you like and to use whatever materials you have at your disposal, but you must score 100% in order for it to count. Before starting this lesson, you should be comfortable writing major scales on any given tonic, and you should be comfortable identifying and writing major key signatures. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to recall the pattern of whole and half steps that comprise a minor scale. You should be able to identify scale degrees by number, solfege, and name. You should be able to spell minor keys on any starting pitch. And you should know the common alterations to minor scale degrees. A minor scale is a collection of seven different pitches arranged in a particular order within an octave. Each note name occurs once and only once, and no notes are omitted. The minor scale comprises a different pattern of whole steps and half steps from the major scale. It is important to note that the half step is always a diatonic half step, never a chromatic half step, because that would violate the once and only once rule. You can see the pattern here is whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the major and minor scales. Both feature only two half steps. They occur between 3 and 4 and 7 and 8 in the major scale, and between scale degrees 2 and 3 and 5 and 6 in the minor scale. Remember to always put carats above the number when you're talking about scale degrees to avoid confusion. Just as in the major scale, we have three different ways of naming the individual scale degrees, and you are responsible for knowing all of these. In most cases, they are the same as the major scale. The three big differences occur with scale degrees 3, 6, and 7. These are all highlighted in red. Scale degree 3, mi, changes to me. Scale degree 6, li, la, changes to le. And for scale degree 7, t, changes to te. And we no longer call T the leading tone, we call Te the subtonic. We can build a minor scale on any pitch. Let's try building one in which B is scale degree 1, or the tonic. The first thing I'm going to do is write all of the pitches in order from B to B ascending within an octave. Scales can, of course, also descend. Notice here that we are in bass clef. Next, I'm going to identify the pattern of whole steps and half steps that the notes create. I can see that there are a couple of places where the pattern I have does not align with the pattern I know for the scale, so I'm going to have to make some changes using accidentals. To create the whole step above the tonic, B, I need to raise the C to C sharp. That has the added benefit of solving the problem between scale degrees 2 and 3. I'm also going to raise the F uh, to F sharp, which creates a whole step between the subdominant and the dominant, and results in a half step between the dominant and the submediant. There is a second, quicker way to build minor scales, but in order to use it, you must be adept at spelling major scales. In order to spell a B minor scale, I'm going to write out the B major scale first, as I did here. You can see it has five sharps and follows the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half pattern that we associate with the major scale. I'm next going to lower scale degrees 3, 6, and 7 by a half step. I'm going to use a natural to cancel out the sharp. In other cases, uh, you'll have to lower the natural to a flat. You'll notice the correspondence between this method and the naming conventions on the earlier slide. When you lower mi, it becomes me. When you lower la, it becomes le. And when you lower t, it becomes te. You're welcome to use whatever method uh, works best for you for spelling minor scales. However, be advised that speed is ultimately of the essence here. 
In lesson 1.3, we talked about the dynamic qualities of scale degrees, and many of those same principles apply here. In the minor scale, 6 really strongly wants to go uh, and resolve to 5. We want 6 to go down to 5. 4 really still strongly wants to go to 3. And of course, the tonic is the ultimate goal of all of these motions. However, the pull of the leading tone to the tonic is gone. Uh, because we've lowered this so that it's now a whole step away from the tonic rather than a half step. To reinvigorate the dynamic qualities of scale degree 7, composers will sometimes raise it a half step, transforming T into T. This creates a large gap between scale degrees 6 and 7, and so occasionally composers will also raise scale degree 6 to smooth out the melodic motion. Lay thus becomes La. When we raise scale degrees 6 and 7, the result is a scale with almost the same dynamic properties as the major scale. Now we have that strong leading tone, T, Do, and we've smoothed out all that melodic motion. We still, though, have the gloomier, kind of uh, darker, lowered mediant of the minor scale, which gives it its particular character. These alterations are quite common. So common, in fact, that th some theorists have proposed names for these forms of the minor scale. The natural minor scale is the plain, unadulterated minor scale that we built earlier in this lesson. The so-called harmonic minor is the natural minor with T raised to T. The so-called melodic minor is a bit strange. It has a different ascending and descending forms. Going up, scale degrees 6 and 7 are raised, and going down, they return to their natural minor form. You probably noticed that I referred to the so-called forms of the minor scale. In practice, composers don't write pieces in B melodic minor or C natural minor. They simply adjust pitches on the fly as they see fit. In this passage from Bach's C minor fugue in the Well-Tempered Clavier Book 1, you can see what can only be described as a descending version of the ascending melodic minor scale. And well, that doesn't make any sense. In this piece, the solfeggietto by one of Bach's sons, Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach, we have the same thing, a descending form of the ascending melodic minor scale. For the purposes of this class, there are two kinds of scales, major and minor. We will not discuss forms of the minor. We will simply explain it as sometimes composers choose to alter notes based on musical circumstances. I bring up these so-called forms of the minor scale because periodically you will hear other people refer to these forms, and you should know them just in case. By this point, you should be able to recall the pattern of whole steps and half steps that comprise a minor scale. You should be able to identify scale degrees by number, solfege, and name. You should be able to spell minor scale starting on any pitch. And you should know the common alterations to minor scale degrees. Feel free to watch all or part of this video again. It's very important that you know this material before coming to class because we will not take time in class to go over it. Work through the practice exercises on Canvas. If you have questions, post them to the discussion board. And please don't hesitate to answer questions that your classmates pose as well. The TAs and I will check in periodically and moderate the discussion. You also must take the short quiz before coming to class. You're welcome to take it as many times as you like and to use whatever materials you have at your disposal, but you must score 100% in order for it to count.